Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So today what I want to do is talk about hoses and arms that you find on vacuum cleaners, uh, your Swiffer wet jets, mops, brooms, and other household cleaning items. The great thing about these is you will find them quite often on garbage day, and unfortunately people do pass them up, which is sad because some of them are tin, there are a lot of them that are aluminum, there's some that are stainless steel, some of them have copper inside of them. So what I wanna to do today is go through some different items here, help you identify the material, and more importantly, how to maximize your profit and divert a number of this item away from the landfill. So here we go. The first thing I do wanna address are your hoses. And your hoses, some people will drive right by these with vacuum cleaners. They'll just cut the cord, for example, and leave the rest. And this hose right here, they do come in different lengths. But the nice thing is if I put a magnet to it, you can see the magnet sticks. And that's because there is a coil that goes all the way down this hose. And the great thing about this is I can throw this right into my tin and I will get tin price for this. And right now in Sarnia, Ontario, tin is going for eight cents a pound. In London, Ontario, it's going for 14 cents a pound. And I don't even have to take off the plastic. So that is great, no work for this. And something diverted from the landfill. There are definitely different lengths. This is another hose. It has the uh, 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 stair attachment, if you will. This too is magnetic. Uh, and some of these, you do want to open up these items. Sometimes there will be copper. Uh, sometimes there'll be a silver contact. This one may have a little bit of brass inside of it. But if all I wanted to do is throw this into my tin as is, I am not going to get penalized for the um, plastic there. Okay, another one. This is off your uh, older style. Again, really nice piece of tin there. Nice cord here. Okay, so definitely want to make sure if it is magnetic, this is still gonna give me tin price. These ones, they do have the on and on, or on and off switch. There will be some brass in there, so I will open this up and uh, see the type of little connectors that I can get out of that. But again, your hoses, excellent piece of tin here. And this is definitely gonna weigh about three or four pounds, this one as is. Okay, another type of hose, and I actually just came across this by accident, was from a central vacuum cleaner. I had this stored up, I found it the other day. And this one, if I put a magnet to it, it does not stick. And the only reason I cut this was actually to get the uh, nozzle off of it. But what I noticed in here, and thankfully I did, was this actually has, you can see on the bottom my finger is, there is a spool of copper that goes all the way down this hose. You can see right there, those coil. So that copper is actually gonna be number two copper. And currently number two copper in London, Ontario is going for $4.43 a pound, Canadian. Uh, there's definitely not gonna be a pound there, but it is gonna be very easy to take out. And given the size of this, uh, there is quite a bit of copper in there. Um, unfortunately, the plastic is gonna go into the garbage, but this does make sense with central vacuum cleaners because they do have to be plugged in in order to use the power cord or the power head. I do have one myself. Um, don't worry, I am not, my wife, I am not gonna take it apart. It's still in great condition. But you will find these sometimes. The other reason I wanted to grab that is because that had a beautiful uh, head to it. This is the head, the attachment to it. Uh, it has a really nice on and off switch. You can see there, there is gonna be a little bit of brass in here. but. The arms you do want to take, this is the other piece of this, okay? There is my cord. Again, there is the copper that comes through it. Once I remove the copper out of this, the rest of this head is going to go into my tin. Um, notice that whomever threw this out did cut the uh, appliance wire off of this, so that's what they took, left the rest. But again, for me, something's better than nothing, so a little bit of copper and some tin, okay? The heads on these... I do love the heads of these as well as your arms from vacuum cleaners and your mops because the great thing about these is there's always an extension to it. There's always, always more than the eye can see. So this right here, this armature, very easy to identify. Put a magnet to it. The magnet sticks. 
This is going to be going to be tin price as well. So eight cents a pound for this. Um, and I'm not going to do anything other than open this and get the brass out. But the rest of this pole do not have to touch the plastic here. Okay. These ones, this is another type of vacuum cleaner. Again, there you can see there is the hose that comes out. Look at the nice size of that hose. And this, I'm going to put a magnet to this. This is non-magnetic. So if it is non-magnetic, there are several different types of metal it could be. It could be good stainless steel, because uh, good stainless steel is non-magnetic. It could be aluminum. Uh, and aluminum right now is going for, this would be clean aluminum or sheet aluminum, going for 50 cents a pound. And the test that is most conclusive is the spark test, okay? Uh, some people will say, well, aluminum weighs less than tin. And sometimes that's true, sometimes it's not. So that is not a conclusive test. The spark test is for sure, in my opinion, the best test. So if I hit this with a grinder, aluminum does not spark. Stainless steel will spark. Uh, tin is definitely gonna spark, but because of the magnet, if I touch it with a magnet, it's gonna be um, uh, tin anyway. But I'm gonna look at a couple of those hoses in a second. The last thing I did want to address as well is sometimes your cords, for example, this cord, this came off of a power head. Sometimes they will also have a beautiful piece of appliance wire that's left. So this wire right here, you can see it goes all the way down the base, all the way to this. And this is going to be the same wire that is your vacuum cleaner wire. Vacuum cleaner wire right now is uh, a 40% appliance wire. And currently right now, 40% appliance wire is going for $1.25 a pound. So that is another reason why I love these arms. Not only do I have tin here, but I have some 40% appliance wire, okay? And those are definitely great items. The reason we call it 40% appliance wire is because when I cut it open, it has two or three individual coated strands of copper as well as an outer coating. That outer coating, a scrapyard is gonna look at plastic to copper ratio and copper recovery. Because there is an outer coating on that, that means there's more plastic and is going to be the 40%. If it was just the three individual strands that were coated by themselves, one coating of plastic, it'd be the higher value at 60% appliance wire. And currently that is going for $2.15 a pound or $2.13 a pound. So definitely a better price, but in my opinion, vacuum cleaners, I don't strip them because I lose the money on the weight. And I am gonna have an upcoming video um, to test that theory, uh, so stay tuned for that. But there is sometimes on your power heads and your arms, additional wire, or they could be running through the arm. So here are a couple that I've taken apart. Notice this one. This has a little bit of appliance wire going right through the arm there. There is my rule. I've got here three, four strands of copper wire with an additional coating. So this is some 40%. But again, at $1.25 a pound, I'm not going to complain. Okay. So definitely different types of arms. This mop here, you can see, I will take this little head off, but I won't touch this. But notice here, this one is magnetic. So there's some more tin. Broom, same thing. Okay, so what I want to do last thing is just show you a couple of different arms that I've taken apart. Okay, so I have this one here. Again, this is part of a, the vacuum cleaner. Notice it is non-magnetic. Okay, this one right here, this is a nice larger one. This is also non-magnetic, but notice the size of these. This one right here I have, this is also non-magnetic. Okay, so I am going to check these. This one is definitely heavier, but again, it does not give you a final test or conclusive test by weight. So this could be stainless steel or it could be aluminum. You'll find out in a second. This one right here, I have, this could be chrome, okay, as well as the other ones like this. Chrome is a very shiny, shiny um, uh, coating on something, if you will. Sometimes it is magnetic uh, if there's tin underneath. Sometimes it is not magnetic. Okay, so for example, this one. Sometimes you can have a stainless steel that is magnetic. And you can actually get a different price at a scrapyard for that. So 
if it was stainless steel look and it was magnetic, uh, it's about 17 cents a pound, so three cents more than tin price in London, Ontario. Um, but again, it all depends on how much you have. A lot of times you can get fridge doors or microwave outer, outer coatings or panels. Uh, different appliances will have the stainless steel look. It is magnetic. And as I said, you can put it in magnetic stainless steel. Um, if I only had, for example, this one pole, I'm just going to put it into my tin. But there is definitely a, a category for magnetic stainless steel at some scrapyards. So you definitely want to check with your scrapyard. Okay, but moment of truth, as I said, gonna do the spark test right here. Here is another one. Oh, this one, I'm gonna fall apart. This is part of the power head as well. They're collapsing on me now. Get that out of the way. So here is another one. This is non-magnetic. So I'm gonna just hit a couple with the grinder. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so the two that I just did here, both of them are non-magnetic and sparked. So these are both stainless steel. And because they are non-magnetic and they are, that would classify them as good stainless steel. And currently right now, this is going for 77 cents a pound. And there is definitely almost two pounds here. This is a very solid, heavy piece. It does have an extension. That's why it's so heavy. There's two layers to this. There is no plastic. Make sure there are no screws or bolts in it that will downgrade it. This one, obviously, to get the clean stainless steel price, I do have to cut part of this off. Uh, and usually what I will do is, if it's there's just a screw there, once I remove that screw, all I'm going to do is actually hit that with a grinder and peel it off. So I will have a really nice piece here. Um, the rest of this, because this is good stainless steel, there is a lot of plastic on here. I do have to remove that for it. And... If there is just a little bit of stainless steel still in the ending, same process. I'm just gonna hit this with a grinder because uh, the stainless steel is not gonna go all the way through. The rest of this head will be garbage, but all I'm gonna do, as I said, is two slits on the grinder. I'm gonna peel it and I will remove that stainless steel. So 77 cents a pound for these beautiful, clean, heavy stainless steel pieces. Okay, gonna continue. Here is my bar, put my safety glasses back on. are just random pieces all of these non-magnetic none of them sparked so these are all going to be aluminum um, and I will say they are not significantly heavy but I just brought in a load of these I had a big bucket of them I had uh, 28 pounds worth just from vacuum cleaner necks and heads and attachments so it does add up and given the amount of them you will find for sure definitely a good product an item to get okay sometimes they are different colors so this is another head again magnetic just gonna hit it too with a grinder okay so beautiful another big piece of aluminum there different one so here is a, a motorized Swiffer wet jet there is a small motor in here that I am gonna get but notice this was left someone just cut the cord off and left the motor in here as well as this piece Okay, so this again is going to be tin. So once I remove the motor, don't even have to touch this um, plastic off here, but I do want to get that motor. But again, another piece of tin, okay? And the list goes on, okay? So again, they do add up. They definitely are something you will find a lot. Uh, and definitely, given the price of these items, you don't want to pass them up. So some of them, as I said, this one, is the test, the first test, the magnet test, magnetic. It is gonna be tin. Uh, this one would probably actually be chrome. Um, chrome is usually a very nice uh, polish on it, um, very reflective, if you will. Um, and it depends on how much you have. There is a category for chrome, but if this is all I have, uh, sometimes faucets you'll have chrome, but not gonna get much more than I would for my tin. So I would just throw this right in and get the weight from the plastic with that. Okay, non-magnetic and it sparks. 
stainless steel, uh, non-magnetic, and it doesn't spark aluminum. Okay, so a lot of great product there from your hoses and just your arms from vacuum cleaners, mops, uh, brooms, anything we use all the time. Don't pass them up. Hope you enjoyed the video. Quick one, but I think important given the amount of these we see every day uh, and definitely better going to the scrapyard than the landfill. Please comment down below. Continue to ask the questions. I love the feedback and comments and I will do my best to answer any questions people have. Um, please stay safe. Hope you have a wonderful 2023. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tin Man out.